all right guys so we finally got the video out and uh i'm just now leaving now we're at the starbucks right next to this walmart and now i'm heading to this local tire shop i'm gonna go ahead and get this rim swapped out so i can get rid of this tire in here because it's taking up a lot of space and they said 20 bucks they'll swap it which is cool i just got one thank god um and anyway real quick while i'm heading this way we're about to cross the bridge i was talking about in the last video um which is the bridge that we were moving all the barges around with the equipment that uh, Skanska was building with. It looked a lot different three years ago. I did a lot of saltwater fishing out here. My boy uh, Sean Bajero, uh he kind of, you know, taught me how to do a little bit of fishing. I know this is it. We was over here catching all kind of fish. <laughs> I remember when I was on the boat, I just got off watch, I was laying in bed, and the captain came got me, he said, hey man, uh, I'm about to get off and go over here, they sending you to Pensacola. I said, huh? Like, you know, like in my mind, I was ecstatic. I said, man, y'all sending me to Florida on a boat, man? You know, that's very uncommon for the industry I was in. A lot of it's in uh, Houston, Louisiana. I might just go chill at the beach, honestly. I was supposed to do stuff today, but I've been editing all day, been trying to get this video out, and, I just want to chill right now. Kind of want to, you know, relax and enjoy the beach. I haven't seen, I haven't seen white sand in oh, like probably at least a decade. So we gotta go hit the beach and check it out, you know. All right, y'all. So update. Uh, I've been in Houston. I'm in Houston. I've been over here in Pensacola, Florida, and man, it is ridiculously hot down here. Which is only why I was just coming to get a little beach out of my system. And then we're going up north where we can get out of this extreme heat. But anyway, uh, oh look, I ended up swapping the, the rim out over here. But we did lose a beauty ring. I can't remember if I told you on the last video or not. So uh, we're just trying to find another one now. I went to a uh, junkyard. They said they don't have any. They actually asked if I was even old enough to know what that is. <laughs> I was like, look, I just learned about it, all right? But uh, that little thing right there. So well, we got all the matched wheels now just missing a little ring and they did tell me there was like yeah saturday uh there's this guy that goes to the flea market local flea market he might have some so saturday i might go check that out also this saturday i believe they had like a a 5k run like the firecracker 5k now i know i'm not gonna be able to run that the entire length but i think i might go uh participate in that because that's my I, you know i like that kind of stuff when i was overseas we did a lot of 5ks in the army period and uh usually for like special events i do a 5k like memorial or veterans day but anyway i'm at lowe's right now because um after we swapped the spare tire that cleared up some space and i got rid of the extra tire and rim but now i have this this hitch bracket this receiver bracket inside the van and it's still a mess in here because i haven't got everything back organized and uh i got this hitch bracket just kind of so I'm gonna go ahead and try to get that mounted. I hope everything, I don't know what I'm gonna need, but hopefully it's, it's as simple as getting a couple bolts or um, I just watched a video and I saw the guy removed, uh, I believe it was one of these brackets on each knob, that bracket at the bottom. He took off those brackets and then he used the bolts off of them. So we'll see if we can get away with that. Otherwise, I parked over here in the shade at Lowe's. I'm about to pull out the receiver and we're gonna see what it takes to get it on. All right, so we got the little bracket out, the receiver now. So I'm just gonna hop down here and see how it lines up, see what we need. And that's really about it. This is a universal bracket. Um, I mean, that's all I really know about it, honestly. So <laughs> let's try to get it on here.
all right what's going on guys yesterday i tried to put on the hitch receiver but long story short uh, i need to take off the bracket which is held in by this this and then some bolts on the other side and long story short they're so old that i really need to drill them out or something and i don't have a drill so i kind of just left it alone and i think i'm going to continue to leave it alone for now but that means we have a hitch receiver that's just kind of hanging out in here taking up space still so i'm trying to figure out uh what the best thing to do is moving forward i don't know if my family's coming out here to florida next weekend to hang out or not we're trying to figure it out now but if they are i might just send it back with them and and i'm just gonna work something out we're gonna figure out this generator so that's like the two things that was on my to-do list but uh if i send it back it'll clear up some space and if i'm just able to run the generator off the roof it really doesn't matter and we'll kind of worry about that at a later time and honestly i'm not 100 percent sure that thing fits but in order for me to even tell i have to get those brackets off right here on either side and then try to line it up and go from there but it's kind of turned itself into a task just because i don't have a drill otherwise um I don't know we'll see we'll figure that out in the future but today i'm at autozone the generator that i have is having some kind of fuel problem so somehow it's not getting fuel it's running it's running fine like if you if you hit it with some starter fluid in the air box but otherwise it's not continuously getting fuel so i'm going to take it down we're going to look at the fuel hoses because this is an older generator and uh, i've been looking at getting like a carburetor kit just to replace the carb but um just as a quick see if we can solve it with the cheapest option first i'm going to take it off and we're gonna check the fuel lines. If the fuel lines are bad, then we're just trying to find a way to replace that. Right now I'm parked at the auto zone, so they should have some kind of small engine repair kits in here or fuel lines or whatever we may need, hopefully. But I'm gonna take it down. Any questions I have, I'm gonna call my boy Eli, White Buffalo Towing. He's my go-to man when it comes to all that mechanic stuff. Being in Florida, it's been super, 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 super hot out here. Like I think it's been more humid here than it's been in any of the other Southern states I've been in. And it's, it's really, it's crazy, it's hot. We just gotta get this thing going because we have to have some AC. That's absolutely mandatory. And uh, regardless of the power situation, I'm really glad I installed it because trust me, I would much rather have the option of having AC than not having it because these windows, none of my windows open up. So I have these little sliding actions on this side and the other side, but trust me, that is not enough. It doesn't do any justice. Enough of that. Let me go ahead and drop this bad boy down. We're gonna check out the carburetor, check out the fuel lines, and hopefully, hopefully, we can just replace a few hoses that might be corroded or uh, deteriorated, and we'll be back in action. But if not, the carburetor kit's like 25, 30 bucks. The only problem that I'm having with the kit is that it just takes a while to deliver. It'll probably, I'll be waiting like a week and a half, which doesn't sound bad, and it's really not, but that's a long time to go hot at night. <laughs> like woo! and that's how it's done all right so we pretty much need to access this compartment right here so i want to break out some tools get this thing cracked open and check it out right here is our fuel line which runs from the fuel tank over here boom so uh i'm dripping a little bit of gas out the top but it's all right let's see if we can check out this fuel line see how it's looking and we're probably gonna spill more gas pliers I just bought for fishing only to be used for fishing the 
now that we got our fuel hose off, let me see if fuel comes out the bottom. If we tilt it. Okay, so yeah, it's coming out of there. So that means we don't have a problem with our um, our connection point. Let's check the hose out. This is the actual fuel hose itself. I'm not sure the condition of this thing. But when I blow it, air goes right through. So that leads me to believe that our fuel hose was fine. Which now just leaves our carburetor left. So uh, we might have to replace, depending on how long this hose is, I might have to replace it because I did just break that piece off. Um, so, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> I will find out though. All right, there's our uh, covering case. And here is our little miniature carburetor. I know who we had to call. Take that carb off and go ahead and take the screw out the bottom and get that bowl off. That bowl needs to be clean. Well, this thing, the carburetor sits on these long screws that kind of push into the frame. Like when, when I go to pull it off, it bumps into the into the frame. Do I just unscrew the studs or what? No, no, don't unscrew the studs. I'll loosen that motor from the frame enough where you can pull that carburetor off without it touching. All right. And then to clean it down or what? I need a new one or what? Yeah, we'll try to clean that one out. Say what's up, dude. What we working with? <laughs> oh, we working with it all. Yeah. Look, this is where I'm at on the studs. Which one? This one or this one? Take that 10 millimeter. That one right there, it's your finger on the one in the center. Take right. that one off and take that bowl off. The fuel is going to drip, so don't be bothered by it. Just take that loose. No fuel, brother. That's our problem. Oh. Okay, it's going to be a, it should be a red filter, I mean a red seal on that screw. Do not lose it. Do not let it get damaged. All right. We got the bolt with the, uh, the, the red seal. The carburetor just clogged up and that gas just sat in the bottom of that bowl and clogged and okay. turned into varnish. So how hard does it feel? Does it, does it feel like it's crystallized? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, Brake cleaner and wire brush, a br uh, wire brush or sandpaper also also will work. All right. Okay. And then what well, about a flathead? Yeah. Get a flathead screwdriver. You got to pull out the jet out of that carburetor. And where's that at? That's in the direct center. Let me see. I can't see it. Like inside? Right there, that little that tube right there in the middle. Um. Is it deep in there? Yeah, it's, it's, it's recessed in there, so you're going to need a small screwdriver to go in there to, and to uh, unscrew it. All right, we'll get it out. And then what, just clean Whatever everything up? screwdriver you use, huh? And just clean everything up? Yeah, you're going to need you're gonna need something small like a damn uh, pick, something tiny. All right. Almost like uh, a paper clip type of size to poke those jet holes back clear so fuel can flow through. That's the that's the pilot jet and the needle. Both of those needs to be pulled out and clean. All right, so I might have to put like a flashlight in there to see it. Somewhat, it'll be easier if you can get it off since we see what we're dealing with. If you want to just go ahead and loosen that motor. All right, yeah, I'll loosen the motor and uh, just get the whole thing off. Yeah, that'll make it a whole bunch easier. It, it don't need it don't need much loosening. Ta -da. So he was saying we need to clean these jet holes on the side as fuel goes through there and then I don't know if y'all can see inside of there we've got to get some kind of small screwdriver that can undo that and then get this whole thing cleaned up pretty good. So I'm going to go inside I'm going to grab a probably a wire brush and some carb or a brake cleaner either one and we'll come back and start cleaning this. So I ended up getting this carb cleaner right here and when I was in there I was looking for some wire brushes or sandpaper and it didn't really seem like they had what would do the trick. We got this random piece of uh, four gauge wire and this will be like our little wire brush and I've got the nails that I used to build the van with. Those are the leftovers of the box so I think we're just going to pull off one and it'll be like a little 
paper clip kind of ordeal. If we can get it broke down. Anyway, just make this a single piece, and that should be able to go into our fuel, our little fuel ports, and hopefully it'll help us clean everything up. Could be a little better, in my honest opinion. But we did get a lot of gunk out of there. A lot of the stuff that looked like it was causing, that would have caused issue. <clears throat> so, I feel better about it. Now, um, I've got my little nail here. I'm gonna get inside these holes, I'll make sure they're unclogged. Our new and improved carburetor. Let's hope that that made a difference. Everything's opening up nice and easy. Let's put our pin back in. Uh, I think I'm just going to go grab some more hose just so we got good hose and that way if we have to replace the carburetor because this didn't work at least we got a new fuel line this is the new one this one's insulated this one came this one had a shrink wrap on it but this one's insulated so basically insulated is like you know the new modern version of shrink wrap insulation so anyway we've got a similar inner diameter id and i just came out here and i tested this hose on before i got this in the clamps this should work we hope it works it fit on there cool i got these clamps right here that's gonna be how we uh tighten it down versus our old method which is those little spring clips that i seem to have lost i just want to cut real quick because after i put everything together eli said there was another piece inside the carburetor so i took it all back apart and i got this thing broke down and let's see the orientation so we took out that little screw from this piece if y'all remember and then on this side there's a little there was, there was something here that turns i took it out this little like throttle body thing right here i took that out because behind it was the piece we need to get access to so this kind of sat in here something like that anyway i unscrewed that took it out and then this piece was kind of sitting off in there and i just had to work for like a good 15 minutes trying to work this thing out between uh using one of those nails and a screwdriver going back and forth hitting it with some uh, carburetor spray and then just tapping on the concrete finally this came out and honestly i think this is our problem because you can see all these holes in here uh look super clogged so i'm about to clean this off really good and we're gonna get this right and let's this looks like this is our issue so Let's hope cleaning this off, we can get some good fuel flow and we can have this generator going. I really believe that that secondary piece I showed y'all was causing the problem because it was really bad clogged up. Everything else didn't look, nothing else looked too alarming. Just a little dirty, but that piece I showed y'all last definitely looked like it could be a problem. So uh, we're just putting it all back together now and Thank God we have people like Eli that we can call because I don't know anything about this stuff. And you know, I probably paid the same, I probably paid the same price to repair this that I would have paid for a new carb kit just to swap this out and put a whole new one on. But the good thing about this is now, uh, since I was able to call Eli and get a walkthrough, now I have some kind of familiar, familiarity, familiar, whatever, you get it. I have some kind of familiarity familiar i still can't say it but we i understand this a little bit more than i did before because i've never done anything like this before uh especially on small engines so that was cool now uh, i like to know stuff like that in case we ever end up in a bind you know you got a little knowledge that can kind of help you out sometimes little stuff like this can go a long way if you're ever stranded by yourself or in a situation where 
uh, nobody else knows anything. Uh, the knowledge and the you know information was priceless. Whew, man, I probably was at uh, the AutoZone parking lot for at least two hours. I don't even know how long it was been, but it's been a little while. And there was a Harbor Freight right down the road. I probably could have got some stuff to make it a little easier on me if I would have did it there. But oh well. We're, uh, I'm at a light. I got a gas station right in front of us over here in Fort Washington. About to hit this gas station and uh, put some fuel up in here, man. Hopefully it runs. I got some faith that it might work. But if it doesn't, you know, I mean, big deal. We'll figure it out one step at a time. But here we go. I get it to where I get that pump on the right side. I went inside to grab a drink. I don't know if y'all been here since uh, Arizona, but I found a four pack of Yoohoo. I've never seen this before, but we in the game. They got Harbor Freight right next door. So I think I'm just gonna go over there to the parking lot and we'll test it out over there. Let's try to get this thing fired up. Unfortunately, they didn't work. But uh, Eli told me what we kind of worked through a little diagnostic and then I ended up right here. So we got the carburetor bowl back off and they had this little float piece which is supposed to be responsible for uh, fuel coming in and out of the bowl. Anyway, took this off and there was, um, this is what's left of the end, it's so tiny. But anyway, long story short, there was a pin that was in here and it's broke off. You know, a little less, a little less luxurious day in van life, but you know, this is, uh, you know, realistically what a day in van life looks like. I've been at this Walmart chilling for a couple days and uh, I met my boy Patrick over here, who's in the minivan. So we started talking yesterday. So anyway, yesterday uh, we exchanged numbers and today we're at the same Walmart and it just rained. So we both weathered the storm and he just came up and I'm like, hmm, I was playing the game, just kind of relaxing, chilling, not doing anything. And then uh, I was like, man, dude, he was talking about how he was hungry or how he was about to figure out what he was about to do to eat. And I'm like, man, I've been wanting to do a catch and cook. I said, man, how you feel about going fishing? He's like, oh, I mean, yeah, we can go fishing. So now, anyway, long story short, I'm about to run inside and pick up some charcoal. Dang. <laughs> I'm about to run in here and get some charcoal um, so we can grill up some fish that we catch. Hopefully we catch some. I pulled the grill out. We got a little six pound bag of instant light charcoal. We got some stuff, we got some uh, bait here. We got some of this um, room temperature shrimp that's look like it's juiced up. And I got a frozen bag. So we had to let that thaw a little bit, but we got some shrimp. We got some stuff to cook potential uh, fish candidates with. And go check on my boy, pa Patrick. You ready, dude? I got a full length adult pole and I got a kitty pole. Between both of us, we gotta figure out uh, how to catch some fish, man. We doubling down on the manpower. So, fingers crossed. y'all looks like we made it to the pier let's see if we can get something today 
and I ain't been fishing in a long time either. I'm kinda excited. Well, I've been, I was, I was fishing when I was in Arkansas, but Chris said we were fishing to not catch anything, so today we're fishing to catch. Got the little fishing poles out. Um, miniature tackle box that I bought. Y'all didn't see this yet. Got a couple pieces of gear in there. Uh, the bait, got a couple hand towels. Got a fillet knife. This is like a two, three dollar knife I got from Walmart. It's pretty cool they make fillet knives that cheap. I was actually uh, excited about that. Oh, this needs to go in here. Store that for later. But you good? You don't mind? No. All right, just make sure I put all the embarrassing stuff in there. Dude, I haven't, I haven't fished. I haven't set a hook in so long. I think the last time I did was, like I said, elementary middle school back in. Yeah, it's been a long time, dude. Used to be my dad and family used to a small liquor store on the lake right across the street. We still there and fish every once in a while. We will come over. And we're gonna put it through the hole. But you see, as we put it through, we're creating another one. We'll bring it back through there. And then boom. Now this way, <clears throat> we got our weight set on the bottom, and then our uh, our bait kind of off the bottom, like that, like so. Within five minutes, we got our first one. Come on, 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 So even though it was a successful day of fishing, it wasn't 
had so much a successful day of catching. But anyway, um, nothing. We I just stopped fishing. Nothing was biting anymore. So my boy Patrick ran to the store. He's going to get a drink or something to eat. And I was like, you know, bro, I got this projector screen I can hook up and like put on a movie. You know, to kind of to kind of ease our uh, our emotions on not catching fish. But anyway, so I think I'm about to move the van over. I never set the projector screen up yet, so this is gonna be a first. I forgot who sent it, so if you sent it, make sure you let us know in the comments. But I'm about to move the van over, um, hook the sheet up to the side of the van, and I guess put on a movie. And considering, I'm sure the volume is gonna be super low on either the projector or my computer. I guess we'll just hook it up to my speaker right here. So let's go ahead and get this thing set up. All right, so uh, we've just been hanging out, waiting for the sun to go down because uh, the sun was up and it's hard to see. We're just now getting to the point to where you can actually see the computer screen on the sheet, if y'all can see it. It's starting to come in. My boy Patrick been over there fighting with his dog. She's kind of been running the show, taking over. <laughs> you see, you don't have a blanket to lay on now. <laughs> this dude. I, got, I went in the bed to get this for her while she sat on that. <laughs> I was funny, sitting here the whole time. She lay there. I got up to get the pillow. <laughs> a couple of fish jumping, so I just try to throw the line back in the water I didn't catch anything though but y'all check out that sunset this is this is van life right here baby even though you can't see it over there like see it on the screen right now man I'm just gonna have movie night right here nice like Bay. I think this is bay water with the sunset. You got people over here fishing on the pier. <sighs> what a night. This is my kind of chalze. This is what I live for right here, man. Just beautiful. Well, I guess uh, I'm just going to keep waiting. We're going to wait till the sun goes down a little more. And we're actually able to get some good visibility on this projector net. It's about that time, y'all. Well, I'm about to kick back, watch the movie, and then uh, probably call it a night after that. We'll go ahead and possibly wrap this video after this, just so I can go ahead and get something out. Patrick, you ready, bro? Ready, sir, All right, guys, I guess I'll go ahead and wrap it up here. It's the next morning. I just got out of Planet Fitness. Uh, took a shower, got cleaned up. Now I'm about to hit the Starbucks. And this weekend for the 4th, my mom, my sister, my brother, well, my little sister, my youngest sister, and my brother's coming out. And we'll just kind of hang out for July 4th weekend, chill at the beach. And that's exciting. So after that, I'll be leaving the Panhandle area, and we're going to be heading so in a general direction to the northwest that's the goal don't exactly know the path to travel but um 
I oh, oh by the way, um, as far as the generator goes, I just ordered the new carburetor a couple days ago. It'll be in um, sometime next week. It'll take a little while. It's like a week and a half to get in. So I'm gonna make a stop, pick that up on the way to the Northwest, and then we'll have our generator fired up, thank God, because that is so necessary, absolutely necessary. But apart from that, I do plan on doing um, um, like a Florida kind of video where y'all actually get some good Florida content. This is a horrible time to be down here in van life. <laughs> I'm not lying. Hor absolutely horrible time, it's so hot. Uh, so I'm, I'm really, I'm anxious to get up out of the South. And Hopefully when we get up north, even though I have the generator to run the AC, I'm really hoping I don't have to, like I'm not relying on it as much as I need it down here. I could just, I'm hoping I could just kind of like get away, get by with some fans, but we'll see. Either way, we're about to be heading up to the north, northwest PNW area. So like I said, man, I cannot wait. I'm so anxious. My number one travel destination in America has been Glacier National Park for years, like years, so long. So uh, to be able to go there is like, wow, you know? That's gonna be super exciting to finally be able to be in Glacier National Park and check out everything they have over there and just soak in all the beauty. And not just of Glacier National Park, but the whole Northwest region. Places I've never seen before, places that, uh, you know, going to the Grand Canyon really put it into perspective for me of what it's like seeing something in, on a screen versus seeing it in real life. Like, you know, sometimes the thing, like the, the camera doesn't do justice or seeing it somewhere doesn't do justice, but seeing the Grand Canyon in real life was like, wow. You know, there's like, wow. Like there's, there's not a picture you can show me of the Grand Canyon or a video that'll ever do the Grand Canyon. Like you just gotta be there. So I'm excited to get that feeling out of being in the Northwest and just sharing it the best way I can. But either way, guys, enough of all that. Um, if you made it to the end, thank you for watching. If you're new, welcome to the family. Um, as always, this big nugget, I love you, and I'm out. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Salt and pepper and heavy D up in the limousine. Hanging pictures on my wall. Every Saturday, rapper back, Mr. Magic Molly Mall.